Leo. <clears throat> I'm looking at the cards and I could collectively say this. Um, it's like all Leos everywhere are coming out of a collective closet. I don't say that lightly and I know I don't like think that every Leo everywhere is, is has issues with their sexuality. But <clears throat> I heard this really awesome TED Talk once. And it just so happened to be a TED Talk given by somebody who was a lesbian. Um, but she was very, very bright. And that she pointed out something that never left me. It was uh, sort of a realization that, that made me realize uh, how so alike all of us are. And she pointed out how, you know, being in a closet isn't just a homosexual thing. And how she was empathizing or found a way to be empathetic with the people in her life. Um, that she had at, at once felt judged by. When she realized that everybody has their closets. Some sort of closet that they keep bits and pieces of themselves in that they just assume the world isn't going to like or that there's no way that people could find a way to love. Now, in, especially in the case of, of sexuality, which I'm sure she experienced in her life, a lot of the times that's not because we just make assumptions. It's because we're actually taught that there are parts of us that are not lovable. You know, society tells us these things or our families tell us these things. And with the recent moon, uh, full moon in Cancer, I was discussing this with my friend recently, Leo. Um, I said that a lot of this, this energy right now, especially the last full moon of the year of 2020 being the huge year that it was, and this decade, the last full moon of the decade, is a lot about cleaning out those aspects of our fourth house. And fourth house is our childhood. It's, it's what builds us. It's what creates us. Those aspects that we've basically incorporated into ourselves that don't really provide us a way forward, that in, if anything, are keeping us back. You know, it's like realizing that when you are young, you're given a script. And when you wake up and realize, it's just a script. This is something that somebody else wrote. I'm allowed to throw this shit away and write my own. <clears throat> It's that. And that's when we start to be able to go and dig into our closets or break out the pieces of ourselves that we decided to lock away because we just assumed that nobody would love them or that we'd get in trouble for them or that, you know, one way or the other, they just, they weren't going to work. And you know what? Maybe it's not a part of ourselves that we share with everybody. But it's certainly a part of ourselves that we're able to love ourselves. And when we're home, those closet doors are open. We don't have to hide aspects of ourselves from ourselves. Because that's real self-hatred. You know, it's like maybe you don't, we don't all want to share parts of our, everything about ourselves with the world at large. And that's a right. And a, a right that I think, especially on social media, with social media these days, has been completely lost. We're allowed to keep things private. We don't have to share everything. It doesn't make us a liar. It doesn't make us ashamed. It just makes us, I don't know, prioritize certain things and say, yes, I don't, not everybody needs to know everything about me. But you, Leo, you do need to know everything about you. And you do need to love everything about you. And I think it comes uh, at a high price, especially for Leos who are so confident about most of themselves, you know, who have a natural charisma and a way of, of getting people to accept them as soon as they walk in the room, that when there's an aspect of the self that, you know, you find unlovable, it becomes really hated. It becomes really something that's frightening and, and shameful and and that's what we're working on right now that's what we're confronting is this sense of moving on and leaving behind not that aspect of yourself but that hatred that hatred for um different aspects of your life yourself um your experiences that you that shamed you you know that that made you feel not so good about yourself and ultimately letting them go and 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 it's not just like like letting them go and letting the shame go 
and taking on that aspect, wow, you know, I was a douche here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, wow, I was, I was really maybe violent here. Or, wow, I was really inconsiderate there. Or, <clears throat> I made decisions here that really I'm, I'm not very happy with. Or, there are some products here that I created and I was a part of that i rather people forget. And there's just this aspect of letting them be behind you, letting them drop away by letting the effect that they have over you drop away. Because that's what's keeping them tethered to you is that decision to stay ashamed or that, yeah, decision that you deserve shame for them or, or um, that they have to be hidden for some reason. Um, there's a realization here, all of a sudden, whoa, oh my God, this is what's wrong. This is what's going on. Um, and it's also a key to your health, a key to your ability to grow beyond where you are now to basically realize that life is about change and change is about learning. And you're going through a change right now. And that change means that you get to leave things behind. This is why I kind of joked about the coming out of the closet. This is a sense of a message about somebody's sensuality. Now, with the Lenormand cards, there's this hint that maybe there's some sort of message or information that's coming into you about feelings that somebody has for you. Um, or desires, a desire for somebody or their desire for you and the information coming out, right? And this could either make you want to go away or like try to hide, run and hide and disguise what's really happening or it could also make you stop or or decide that you're not sure which way to move, like, like um, you know, which way do I go from here? That kind of energy. Um, what do I do next, right? Um, it could also be, hold on, a sense of opening, deci deciding to open yourself up to somebody about your desires mm -hmm. and getting a kind of foggy response from them. This is, would be a very formidable person, masculine energy, so they're a doer, they're a taker, they're uh, somebody who gets things done, they could be somebody who's in charge. Um, but it's a very formidable energy that kind of makes you wary or a little bit shaky or scared that maybe you even approach this person. And there's an instant, oh my God, should I have done that? Oh my God. And to be honest with you, yeah, you should have done that. Because you have these two cards right here that say, there's good luck in here in being exposed. You see how she looks like hyper exposed, like way uncomfortable with herself right there. Yeah, but the, but this is saying that, yeah, that's inviting good fortune, Leo. That's, it's almost like you have to be this vulnerable. You have to allow yourself to be this hyper exposed in order to, you know, take the chance that you need to take in order to get what you really want to get. Um, there was no other way he threw it. And it's also saying, calm down, relax, because honestly, this is just another opportunity to change. This card is about change. It's about realizing that, the comfort zone that you maintained was more about fear than anything else. And feeling hyper exposed and super shaky and ashamed is really just kind of like growing pains, growing through uh, this change that you're going through. And it's a really good thing that you even have the courage to be able to um, decide to decide to like decide to do something differently. Um, at the very least, these cards are telling me that deciding to do something differently or, or take a chance on something that intimidates you, that you're not as certain of, right? It, it, it worries you. You're not in control of it. Um, you're not familiar with it. There's no comfort zone, but that's good. That's a good thing. Um, that's what it's saying. Beautiful, beautiful fortune coming here. Um, your friends have definitely got your back. I would not be surprised if while you're going through these changes, hearing from your friends or just words that they say to you or they got your fucking back. Like maybe that's one of the biggest things when we change is worrying about who we'll have to leave behind, you know, if our life changes. But the truth is, I think you got a bunch of ride or dies, man, that would definitely, I know some people don't like that expression, 
I just think that you have very loyal friends and they're always going to come up behind you. And I think in some ways, this is feeling that you have a support system that believes in you even when you don't believe in yourself. And holy crap, what a blessing that is to have people in your life who remind you of your power when you forget it. Like that's very beautiful. So ultimately, it could very well be your friends that are saying, do this. You got to keep going. Keep going after it. Don't give up. We know you deserve this. Mm, how beautiful and blessed you are to have that in your life. And I really do hope that that's what you're experiencing. Call your spirit home is a really interesting card. It's kind of, you know, philosophical in a way, but ultimately I think this means you're getting closer to you and being your true self you know, doing what you love to do. For a long time, you may have gone astray and, you know, did what you could do or did what was available to you or, you know, did the things or dated the people who were kind of like into you, right, or available. But ultimately, this is you finding your sincerity and truth and finding exactly where you want to be, doing doing what you're interested in now. Um and, and, and this, it's, it, I was like, is this really Leo energy? Leo knows that they're good enough, but that's not always true, is it? At all. The amount of self-doubt and shame that Leo feels is just something that they keep inside and you guys internalize and don't admit to anybody, you know, because you almost, you almost understand how important your confidence is to everybody. It's almost like you feel like you owe the world being confident because if you weren't confident, what else would you be contributing or understanding how important it is for people to see somebody getting stuff done. And ultimately, this is saying allowing yourself to open up and be vulnerable and understand that no, this is this is real self-faith, belief in yourself, self-esteem. Um, be bold and make the first move. In other words, this is a chance that you're taking in an area that means so much to you. You would almost rather avoid it than find yourself in a position where you disappointed yourself or you were rejected from it. This is, and this could be a person, you know, that you're romantically interested in. This could be a project or a job. This is a general reading. So you apply it to the area in your life that it applies to. But ultimately, this is really pushing that Achilles heel of, of your feeling of insecurity, of your feeling of, wait, and am I good enough? And the fact that this, this, this instance makes people feel, makes you feel humble, just tells me that it is exactly where you're supposed to be. Because, because that, because I mean, just like, that's the key thing with Leo is something that can humble them, something that can put them in awe of the universe and say, this is, this is what will teach me what I want my life to be. This is something that will move me and change me. How beautiful it is. You are good enough for this and you are good enough to make the first move. And a lot of us now are having to make the first move, even though we feel really vulnerable and out of, you know, out of, out of our, our realm of comfort, let's put it that way. But it first and foremost, there's a, a sense of feeling, feeling whole and complete, feeling like we're good enough. Um, let's get into the, um, <clears throat> animal. I'm sorry. I'm sick just so that you guys know, have not been feeling good for the past couple of days. So um, if you, if I feel a little bit down or I'm looking a little bit like under the weather, it's because I am. So Leo, 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 this is animal totems. These are your animal totems. Um, watch and wait. Um, yeah, let's see what this batch turns up. So we have Piscean energy, having patience and lack of judgment, complete understanding, also a sense of masculine femininity um, because seahorse, this is a paternal card, but it's a paternal nurturing card. It's a way to nurture yourself through your action. Um, um, this is seahorse, male seahorses give birth. This is going through with the flow um, and just receiving, receiving to create. Um, this is, this is patience. Watch and wait. Uh, to be honest with you, this message is something that I think is very direct. I'm not even going to try to interpret it. I think that the angels or your spirit guides are simply saying to you, you need to watch. So keep an eye on this situation 
and wait because if you need to make another move after you've made the first move, if you're you're staying diligent and you're remaining diligent, you'll get the cue as to when. By in other words, you don't have to keep nagging or or following. In fact, you have to be patient. You want to get some response, but it's almost like the universe itself might give you a response of when you have to take action again. So whatever you're engaged in or involved in, like say you hit on somebody or you made the first move with somebody and you haven't heard from them. Okay. There's no rushing them. There's no getting back in touch with them, but there is staying conscious of what's happening and what's affecting your circumstance with them. And it's almost like there's something else is going to come through to let you know when you're going to have to take the next move. And now it doesn't have to be a relationship. Like I said, uh, oh, spirit messages are going to come through for you. So it's spirit itself that's saying, okay, you know what? You make the first move. That's what I want you to do. I want you to make the introduction, let them know you're there, right? But then wait, I will come back and send you a message as to when it's time to try again and do the next thing. And that next thing will be something that you already expect, something that you already anticipate. You'll have to reach out, get in touch with them again, but you'll know when you'll know what the right time is in order because ultimately this is, a, it's almost like a teeter totter ride right now of waiting and then taking action, waiting and then taking action. You do have to take action, but you have to take action in response to a cue from spirit. So basically right now is you're waiting for your cue. You don't want to step on somebody else's lines, right? <laughs> right. You threw out the old script and now you're trying to like improvise this new one. Well, the biggest part of improvisation is timing and listening. And that's what spirit kind of wants you to do right now is don't jump in right now. Wait for the sign. Wait for the message. Um, and then we have uh, clear out the clutter. So ultimately, there's something that you're holding on to or not discarding. Um, usually this is sort of unbalanced energy, but I'm feeling like it's good news because this came in a future position and it's almost like, I don't know, you may feel like you've been discarded, but no, you haven't. Somebody's holding on to you. I think, I th yeah, somebody's, somebody's holding on to you. Um, and then we have spirit has your back. So it's almost like, um, I don't know why this came out all unbalanced. Yeah. Bring your ideas to uh, everything is uh, imbalanced. Uh, everything's upside down. Spirit has your back. This is a sense of being disconnected spiritually or, um, going against leadership and then bring your ideas to life your ideas getting squashed or you're not believing in your, your ideas and surrender now deciding to not give up, to not surrender. Um, okay. I need clarification on this because what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. What is going on? Oh. Something is balanced and out of proportion. But what is this? Watch your words. It's almost like spewing and talking too much or somebody saying too much. Um, and you seeing that something is oh, Something is off. Something that you wanted to be a part of is off. Because there's this narrow mindedness here. There is um, a short sightedness. Oh, there's nothing that you can do right now to wake somebody up from their own short sightedness. There is definitely a sense of being repetitive and not really them not wanting to make the next move or take the next step. Them being fearful of like of 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 not getting approval from something that they want approval of or a higher up than them. Um, um, and in some ways, hold on. Yeah. 
I have to say this to, to plain and simple, Leo. This is about you being disruptive. Yeah, if I could do a hashtag disruptor, you're, you're being disruptive. You're kind of like, it's almost like spirit is saying, acknowledging that somebody is not seeing the big picture. And that in a lot of ways, you're going to have to get real comfortable with being that person that is leading them in a new direction entirely. And they're not going to be very happy about it for, for a, a while. But not even just that they're not going to be happy about it. They may be happy about it. But it's like right now, they can't get out of their own way. But it's, it's, it's saying to you that you're not supposed to be the one that is holding up the status quo. You're not supposed to be the one that is making people comfortable. You're supposed to be the one that's saying what needs to be said in order to rock people's worlds so that the same old ideas don't get stuck being repeated over and over again. Whatever that means to you. Um, let me, let's go on to the angel readings. Um, I'm going to go into tarot. The extended, you guys, the link is below. Please do uh, please do join me on over there. I'm going to articulate all this energy with tarot and see exactly what's going on. Um, and your romance reading is over there too. But we're going to do angel messages right now. Leo, if you haven't, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, you can also ring that bell so you know when I upload all the content. Leo-specific uh, content comes out every single Friday. Um, so if you ring that bell, you'll get notified. Also, there's always an extended video. You can go enjoy the extended video right now. Um, and you can subscribe to that platform as well. And you'll actually get notified if you do that. You'll get notified um, when I upload all of those videos. You'll have access to the videos, mm, I would say, about a day before, um, about a day before, um, um, you have access to the link on the uh, YouTube video. So FYI, also please do join me over on Instagram, born underscore without underscore boundaries, where I do live readings all the time, usually Monday through Friday. Uh, they're general readings, but, um, they're live interactions and they're a lot of fun and they're wonderful motivation. Um, let's see. I know something turned over here. Ooh, the unknown came out. Yeah, this is all a sense of like uncharted territory. And I think that that's kind of the, like, like you're going to a place where nothing has been done before. The unknown, do not fear the unknown. This is a time of deep exploration and transformation. Unfamiliar territory leads to new horizons. So I think it's unknown for you, definitely, which dis which explains the discomfort, but it's also unknown to them. So it's be really interesting to see what's going on through their minds. Inspiration, a new idea comes to you like a gentle whisper inside your heart. Listen and take action. This is inspiration from high above. Okay, okay, that's God talking to you. Inspiration. And then we have um, destiny. Your destiny is to blossom, to shine, to transform to an ever greater light. So you are leveling up. You, you are. And, and this discomfort is all about your life changing for the better. And then we have wisdom. Everything has a place and purpose. To be wise is to have great love, tolerance, and compassion for all things. So, you know, you're wiser now than you were when you went through your transformations 10 years ago. You have all the experience and wisdom that you've earned over this past decade to guide you and make this transformation even more successful. So um, there is a sense of knowing more and doing better this time around. Sacred Source, we, your angels, are here to remind you of your magnificence. You are literally an angel in the making, a being of eternal love and light, forever one with God, Goddess, and all creation. Yeah, you're definitely leveling up. And then, last but not least, Vision. A positive outcome requires a positive vision. If you see something good, it will be good. If you think you're doing wrong or you're being a bully or you're asking too much, then eventually people will pick up on that vibration too. But if you believe, no, I deserve this and it's for the better and these ideas are stuff that's going to help, if you keep that in mind, that's what will be. 
A positive outcome requires a positive vision. Visualize everyone involved in your present situation surrounded by light and love. Make sure to include yourself also. Your love has the power to influence and transform the current events. This is the love for a person or the love for your thing, your destiny, what you're meant to do. And if you're doing this all out of love, people are going to feel that come through on the opposite side. That opposite side is what I'm going to get into in, in tarot. Let's get some insight into what's going on in their brains. That link is below. I will see you guys in the extended.